people lost everything. Their light was extinguished, replaced by a hunger for magic and vengeance. What is going on YouTube? McIntyre here. Today I'm bringing you an up-to-date Kel'Thas build video. In this video I'm going to be going over the build that I prefer currently, how to combo as Kel'Thas, and more importantly that if you use your passive and QA minion wave, I will find you. Jumping into the video, let's first start by going over the talents for the build. This build is very based around your basic combo for the character and because of that we're going to be taking talents that require you to land abilities in a row starting at level one the most important talent on kt and something that i think that people just need to get over is mana addict there are a few reasons that this talent is so good firstly it increases your maximum mana on kt which means that going into a fight you'll be able to cast your spells more often um, but also after 20 globes you're able to use mana but also after 20 globes, you're able to gain a barrier equal to the mana that you've gathered. This is important for Kel'Thas as he has his apparent weakness is his inability to get away from people once they're on top of him. And while this build is very good at dealing with those type of characters, Mana Addict will keep him alive with the barrier for long enough for him to kill them before he is killed. Uh, this is something that you'll have to actively do as you play the game, search for globes, and typically you'll have Kel'Thas in the four man anyway, so this shouldn't be too bad to gather the globes for. Overall, I think this town is just the best at level one. And while Convection is cool to do a little more damage, it is possible that it never is complete depending on if the enemy team dodges enough and it doesn't help with KT's biggest weakness which is his inability to escape someone on top of him so at level one we're gonna be taking mana addict at level two this talent might be a little controversial but I think it is the best one at this talent tier and that is going to be energy royal after you cast your tornado if it lands its cooldown is reduced by nine seconds and it also reduces the mana cost of the ability altogether as we can read on netherwind if your gravity lapse lands you get mana back with this talent if you cast the ability its mana is reduced so you're only really saving 10 mana here if you hit a hero um, but what if you don't hit a hero right you get taxed all of that mana um, with energy royal you always get that deductible on top of a nine second cd on your E. Uh, this this will pair really nice with the level 13 talent that we'll also be taking, but I just want to point out that really all this talent does is give you an increased 30% range. And if we look at it already, Gravity Lapse has a pretty long range. So I feel like for me, with people diving you as KT, the range part of this ability doesn't really mean as much, while nine seconds of CD off of your E is massive. Um, as we see here, I'll cast the E now. And we have to wait 14 seconds before we can cast it again, right? But if we toggle our cooldowns really quickly and we take this talent and it lands, we're only waiting four seconds to recast. This is obviously extended and the cooldown means even less if we empower our E with KT as the person will be stunned for 1.5 seconds, leaving us at about 2.5 second downtime of stun on a target. To me, this is just absurd. As long as you have the ability to continue to land your gravity laps, then you'll continue to CC a target, be it a Muradin, an Illidan, an Imperius, anything that can dive KT gets immediately shut down as long as you have the skill to continue to land gravity lapses. So at level seven, this is a interesting talent here as they're all, in my opinion, very good talents. Um, burn Flesh is going to be if you're getting dove by multiple melees, if the other teams tends to be grouping up and clumping, this can be really powerful as you get into the late game paired with your flamethrower ability, which we'll be taking at level 20. Sun Fury's King, I find, is more powerful on maps like Volskaya, like Infernal Shrines, where there's an objective where the other team tends to group up um, as the Sun, Fury, uh, the Sun King's Fury will kind of spread and pop more anytime your chain bomb pops and hits multiple people, especially in a lower ranked games. I think this talent is very very powerful to take 
in team fights. And something that I take that I personally like myself is Sunfire Enchantment. And now this is the one that again on stream people disagree with me. But the way that I like to play KT is for the one shot. Um, in most cases with this ability, he can one shot essentially any character in the game. And so here is how I kind of do my basic combo with Sunfire. In most cases, I'm juicing up my gravity laps as people are going to be diving me. So we'll hit our verdant spheres, right? And we throw our tornado. We can then QW with one auto attack and we'll get empowered Q with 15% spell power, empowered W with a 15% spell power, and then we'll lead or we'll end that combo with a pyro blast. So at level 10, we're gonna be taking pyro blast. This obviously takes 1.5 seconds, but after the 1.5 seconds, it'll do 2000 damage to one target. And we increase that damage by 15% because of those two basic auto attacks. So the two basic autos come out and then we'll pyro blast. You can see there, our Pyro Blast did 2,500 damage. So in most all cases, this combo will net you kills on almost any target in the game. I'm talking Malganus, I'm talking Diablo, I'm talking Stitches. If you land the full spell combo on those targets, you will kill them. And this is without saying that your two auto attacks don't do 250 spell damage. Obviously we're at level 20, but 250 bonus damage on top of an auto attack is substantial considering, you know, one living bomb does 500 damage, right? So two auto attacks is the equivalent of a living bomb worth of damage. Um, if you can work them in while people are diving you, you will get a lot out of this ability. So for level seven, Sunfire Enchantment is my personal favorite. I find it fun to have the crit autos and also empower my pyro and all my other spells. But if you feel like you aren't going to be getting off those auto attacks, then both Burn Flesh and Sun King's Fury are very good. There really is no wrong level seven talent. And I think all of these talents are very powerful. It's all personal opinion. And really you can go wherever you want, but diving into the level 10 Pyro Blast is going to be the ability. Do not be fooled. This ability was a meme. It still might even even be but Phoenix is an ability that no one cares about the damage is there it does exist but it's not taunting it's not scary they're not afraid of the Phoenix right however pyroblast is something that they must be afraid of and in most cases characters in this game have no way of dealing with it right there's a few unique cases where people can phase themselves like Brightwing or you know there's a couple characters that have ice block you know an example would be a Yorel and her, her her ultimate all of these things sure are special cases to block the pyroblast but when you play against characters like Hanzo and you're able to Sunfire enchantment get off two auto attacks on the front line and then see that the Hanzo is 75% health in the back and Pyroblast gets off on him, he is dead. And in most maps, this range is stupid. I mean, I'm talking, what are they thinking? Like Cursed Hollow, you can be sitting in the mid lane on the top right Cursed Tribute and he can be standing at the hard camps shooting arrows. In most cases, he is not thinking about the Pyroblast that you're casting on him. And then all of a sudden, here it comes, there's no way to deal with it. And with even without the bonus spell power from the level seven, you're still hitting him for 2000 damage. So it's an absurd, absurd amount of damage built into a point and click of it. The only requirement is that it takes 1.5 seconds. So as long as you're not getting it canceled, you have no fear. I mean, I've had Illidans, you know, people like to counter Kael'thas with Illidan. The Illidan dies on top of you, you pyroblast them. There's nothing they can do unless they have hunt, right? In most cases, they're gonna open with hunt. They're on top of you, boom, 2000 damage. You hit your E, they're up in the air for 2.5 you can get a full combo so a full combo on a diving illidan would be something like this and as he's coming down from the ground he's already taken 4,000 damage obviously this is level 20 but it's still something that is so absurd because there is actually no counterplay, right? This all comes out if you do it quickly, if you're comboing fast, 4,000 damage, there's nothing they can do about it. They're stunned for the entirety of it. And hey, guess what? If you're juicing your E, which in most team fights you should be, you can hit more than one target. So it's like possible that you stun three people, Chain Bomb pops, Sun Fury Kings pops, the Pyro hits all three of them, and all of a sudden you've now one shot three people at the same time. It is so absurd. Absurd. Um, and it continues to get absurd as we go into level 13, which is Pyromaniac. 
So each time Living Bomb deals damage, Kael'thas's basic cooldowns are reduced. So as we were just saying, with Gravity Lapse, if you hit more than three people, you can hit up to three people. If you Chain Bomb and those Chain Bombs procs and hit both of them or all three of them, then your Gravity Lapse will be essentially back up. So if I were to hit both of these and Chain Bomb, by the time they hit the ground, this will pop and the Gravity Lapse will be back up. Where you really see this talent get a lot of value outside of just your random CDs and team fights when chain bomb spread is when you're doing camps. I typically start with a Q and then I'll put a W on both and you'll see the Q's cooldown ticks back incredibly fast. And then you're able to just quickly take out camps. Um, and this, this speed is even faster when it comes to hard camps as the Ignite ticks will, will pop even more. So we'll start with a Q and we'll put the W's, make sure that the chains get another one going. And after level 13, KT is very possible and very capable of doing camps by himself. Those are a bit, bit sloppy, but you kind of get the point of it that he's, he's able to camp very quickly. This effect helps in team fights keeps your E on a faster CD. Every time it ticks, you get the decreased CD. So let's try it now on these target dummies to get a better example of what I was talking about before. So you hit this and you can see by the, almost the time they hit the ground, we're ready to go again with another tornado. So it basically puts a tornado on like a one second cooldown as long as you're adding in that W at the end of your E. So I think it's a very, very, very strong talent and it works incredibly well with, again, Energy Royal. That is where our main power of this ability is, uh, or this character's kit is coming from is this ability and one that I think that we really should take a moment to harp on. Um, obviously all the 13 talents are decent and there's really outside of Fission Bomb, which isn't too bad if you take Sun Kings, um, especially at like a lower rank when the other team is gonna be hugging each other a bit more. I would say at this point, most people are pretty good about dodging KT's Chain Bomb effect at even all ranks, but you know, Backdraft basically just guarantees when you cast W on somebody, they're gonna be slowed. That in some cases can make it easier to land your E if you need to, but Pyromaniac is going to pump out the most damage, right? It's gonna decrease the cooldown of your Q. Uh, it's gonna decrease the cooldown of your E. It's gonna even decrease the cooldown of your Living Bomb. So again, if we watch that, like if we do a full combo on somebody you can see everything's kind of ticking faster down right giving you more uptime giving you more uptime it's so hilarious to get nano boosted as this kt build because you're constantly spitting out all of your abilities so i find it just a a really good talent for the build and you know our objective of energy roiling and stunning them as much as possible so looking at our level 16 talent tier things start to get a little wild and what i'm about to say will not only offend your mother but it also might make you unsubscribe from my youtube channel and that is going to be that at level 16 on this build when i'm really feeling it i do indeed take twin spheres and the reason for that is not only do i have more uptime on my energy royal triple stunning i also have 15 percent spell power the entire time pyromaniac is pumping which is allowing for increased cd on all of my abilities i'm getting extra double auto attacks in right um so i'm doing a thousand damage of bonus auto damage and it allows me to maybe double ignite something with a living bomb right i can put the living bomb on two different targets that's proccing all of my cds faster it's allowing me to maintain more damage and overall is increasing my dps and i say this only because ignite is definitely the better talent at this talent tier the issue that I have the ability is that flame strike ignites a target with living bomb but if you're doing a full combo you're already applying a living bomb yourself so in reality you're kind of wasting a CD with your W if you're igniting somebody right you would take ignite I'm not gonna take it now but you know in most cases you would cast your E and then you would cast your Q and then that would ignite the target, right? This only ignites one target. So if there's multiple people standing in a in this queue, then it's going to ignite the closest to the center. So you can, you know, if you hit two people here, let's say, and I had taken this talent, uh, I'll even stun them. I'll cast my Q here and then I'll W that, right? Now, both of them would have had Living Bomb on it. You can argue that if you're good enough, you can do something like that. The main strength for Ignite for me is it's power with flamethrower obviously if we're flamethrowing when we get to that talent tier at level 20 i just think that ignite is better because you're 
at max range, chucking cues from across the screen at the enemy, right? And there's nothing they can do every time it hits ignite procs. They're going to take a good, you know, 1500 damage. And that is to say you don't hit two people, in which case the cooldown is reduced to a three second CD, right? The ignite's going to proc, pyromaniac's going to proc. You probably have a two second CD queue at that point. So incredibly powerful, right? But with twin spheres, again, if you're feeling melee heavy, if you feel like you're meleeing, if you feel like you can get those auto attacks off, right? If you can get that, that second auto off, then in most cases, I do think that twin spheres can be better. If you have Illidan's diving you, if you have Immuridans jumping on top of you, right? The ability to be able to cast your DE twice, right? So you can see here, right? They come down and now I can do it again, right? Now my second one's CDing and now I can do it again. And now it's CDing again, right? Oh, we're back up. Like being able to continuously stun for 1.5 seconds on multiple people in a team fight, in my opinion, is better than igniting a target every time you hit Q because you're already going to be living bombing people, right? You're already going to be casting your W on your, on your rotation. So this is controversial, sure, but in practice, in application, when I'm using it in game, it feels very strong, you know? It allows me to increase my overall burst by, you know, double living bombing. Um, so, you know, while the, the, the continued chain E is good, um, if I stun, throw my Q and then I can double living bomb these two targets, right? That can increase my burst. But for the most part, when I do take Twin Spheres, it is because I want to continue that chain CC. I want to continue lifting up more than one person, keep my auto attacks going to increase my spell power. So it's a much more melee, almost ranged assassin Kel'Thas than it is the poke artillery Kel'Thas that is Ignite. With that said, at level 20 for this build with Verdant Spheres or Twin Spheres at level 16, there's two talents that I think you can take. Flamethrower is obviously one, it's very powerful, but without the level 16 talent, we lose a lot of that power and thus i usually take presence of mind because you're going to be popping your q you're going to be popping your w all your cds are going to be pumping faster because you're verdant sphering your tornado right you're getting your w out on more targets all your cds are going to be faster in this case and thus presence of mind can be very powerful um just for continuing to one shot people right so it's usually presence of mind with this build uh, flamethrower is decent and honestly master of flames again we always talk about the, the lower ranks if people are clumping this talent can be really sick especially with pyromaniac if they're just allowing your bombs to pop over and over and over again it can be really powerful talent and something that i think overall if you take it you're not punishing yourself by doing it but for me this is my current favorite build for Kel'Thas when it comes to the character. If you guys have any questions about this build, let me know in the comment section below. I can talk more about it. Again, just the basic combo of Kel'Thas before I leave. The minion waves always meet. If you guys didn't know, minion waves have three archers. So obviously there's three melees, a mage, and three ranged. And the way that they meet, they kind of create a circle themselves when they touch each other. You can see three, right? I can put my Q here. Then W, the middle one, if I wasn't a high level or if I did it a little bit faster. I can W the middle one and clear the entire wave as Kel'Thas, right? What does this do? What does this do for me? Well, it saves me 50 mana, right? So we see KTs all the time, every single day. Master ranked, bronze ranked, doesn't matter. Go power. Oh, this looks easier. And yes, that one shots the wave. And if you need to one shot the wave, from a safe range, you could argue that you could use your DQ, right? But if a wave, you see a wave coming up, you're not really contested or in a place to be scared or have someone dive you or whatever the case, then very quickly use your Q on the wave like this. You can see it hits everything. W that middle wave and you've now saved 50 mana and you've cleared the wave just as effectively, right? And the other thing that I don't want to see you guys doing on Kel'Thas, there's someone diving you. Okay, uh, I'll use my passive and, right? You use your passive and you cast your Q. Like empowered Q doesn't say deal more damage. It says inverted spheres increases the radius. So it increases the radius, which is great for abilities like flamethrower, where you want to hit more than one target or burn flesh, where if you hit more than one target, you do percent health damage, right? You have a Diablo and a, and a Blaze on the enemy team. Burn Flesh is an incredible talent. And you could argue even that 
in some cases, maybe if you cast your passive and Q them, you could hit both of them. But I would argue that if you empowered your Verdant Spheres and Tornado both of them, you would guaranteed hit both of them with Burn Flush. The other thing that you can do with this build in lane, W someone and just auto them two times. Right, now that we've taken we've taken Sunfire Enchantment, auto attacks do a lot of damage. This, this, this frustrates people, right? This will frustrate someone to the point that like, a Murden might just jump at you or a noob might dig at you, right? And then they dig at you, you activate your arcane barrier, hit them with a tornado, put your full combo, pyroblast them. They have no escape anymore. You're just going to kill them, right? These are the things I think I don't see KTs do enough just from the basics of clearing the wave effectively, which I've just shown you and doing a basic damage rotation. You don't always have to commit to your gravity laps. Um, like I said, especially with a Sunfire Enchantment, you can just get in autos on somebody. That'll then juice your next combo. So now if you decide you're gonna combo, you have the 15% spell power. You're gonna be dealing even more damage. The one thing that you need to worry about is your position and if you get dove, are you dead? In most cases, if you have a good support, you have your barrier at a decent amount and you're hitting your ease. This is the most important for this build. You will, you can't die on this character. You cannot die. It's very hard unless their whole team, I'm not talking, when I say whole team, I mean five people dive you. It is very hard because even in this case, if I'm surrounded by these three, right? And I run a little bit this way, I can tornado all of them and run. And then, oh, they've caught back up to me. Okay, oh, well. That's gonna be it for this. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you want more Kel'Thas content, a gameplay showing off the build, or talking about the artillery Kel'Thas build, let me know in the comment section below. I'll link the description in the description, the build link, so you can just go and copy each of the talents for your in-game. If you have any questions about the build, also let me know in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read all of them and comment through. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the Heroes of the channel. We're gonna continue to pump out content for you guys to enjoy that has to do with Heroes of the Storm. So make sure that you are throwing the like and subscribing and ringing that notification bell. This is gonna be it for today's video for me, guys. Thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. And until the next time, I'll see you then. Cheers.